Well, good afternoon and a warm welcome to the Institute for Advanced Study. This is the eighth event of the lecture series Scholarly Correspondences Among Orientalists During the Early and Late Modern Period as a Historical Source. One aspect that is important to us is to look at the possibilities digital scholarship tools can open up to explore the material at hand. And this is why the series is co-hosted by Near Eastern Studies and Digital Scholarship here at the IS. And with this, I pass the word to my colleague, Maria mercedes Tuya from our IT department, who's in charge of digital scholarship here at the IS. We're very glad that you could join us. Um, I want to add some um, housekeeping rules. Um, we ask that you keep your microphones muted so we don't uh, have any distractions for our speaker. And we will be using the chat for questions and comments. Please, please feel free to add them either during the talk or at the end and, uh, and uh, let us know what you would like uh, to ask or comment on. And I'm very happy now to introduce today's speaker, Celeste Gianni, who joins us today from Collegeville, Minnesota, or actually you are, you're based in Italy today. <laughs> Dr. Celeste Gianni joined Hill Museum and Manuscript Library in 2020 as a catalog of Arabic manuscripts. A native of Italy, she earned her BA in Arabic language and culture from the Università degli Studi Carlo Bo, Urbino, Italy, and an MA and a PhD from the School of Oriental and African Studies, the University of London. Prior to joining uh, Himmel, um, Gianni, uh, Celeste, Dr. Gianni, Dr. Celeste Gianni had teaching and research positions in the United Kingdom, working for the University of Oxford and SOAS. And her most recent publication is uh, her article uh, in the Journal of Islamic Manuscripts, uh, Paul Spartz Manuscript Library, conceptualizing the library of a Syrian Catholic priest between Europe and the Middle East in the early 20th century. And Paul Spartz is also the topic of her talk today. So Celeste, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for inviting me to be part of uh, this series of lect lectures on scholarly correspondences among Orientalists. Yesterday, I'd like to introduce you to a special correspondence that took place between a Syrian Catholic priest named Paul Spath, who was also a manuscript collector that sold his manuscript library um, to the Vatican Library. And um, the, these transactions and uh, the sale of it, these libraries are attested by a series of uh, letters and, and other documents that are kept at the Vatican Library, and in particular um, that um, involve um, the, at the time uh, librarian, assistant librarian, and, and then we will see uh, the change of, of his role during during these transactions, the Cardinal, uh, Cardinal Eugene Tisserand. First of all, I'd like uh, you, uh, to introduce you to Paul's Bath and, and Tisserand with some biographic notes and then describe uh, the archive material that, um, that uh, includes the, the correspondence between these two, uh, not, not only between Spath and Tisserand, but also other, uh, other uh, characters and um, have a look at the timeline of the main events before uh, giving you a glimpse on the contents of, of the correspondence and reach some conclusions in order to discuss uh, how um, the, the title uh, says a library lost in translation, let's say how the, this correspondence um, includes some um, very interesting uh, information regarding um, the perception of a manuscript library uh, at the beginning of the 20th century from the point of view of um, Paul's Bath, a Syrian Catholic priest, and uh, Tisserand, the, the Cardinal of, uh, of the Vatican Library. And then it would be great to open up the discussion in, in this regard. So first of all, uh, um, Paul Bath was born in, in Aleppo in 1887, and uh, he started even earlier than 1912 to collect uh, um, manuscripts, but mostly uh, the, the bulk of his collection um, formed during uh, the years between 1911 and, and 1914, in particularly 
during World War I, um, he uh, moved back to Aleppo after teaching in Jerusalem, Syriac and Arabic. And he was planning to travel, uh, uh, to, to make a study trip to Europe as many scholars uh, or academics uh, at the time used to do um, as a period of, of formative um, in, their, in their scholarly uh, background. However, the, the start of World War I uh, implied that he couldn't. And um, so he moved back to Aleppo and collected most of his manuscripts, reaching a number of uh, 1,325 manuscripts um, that became part of, uh, of the collection that is called, uh, that he himself named um, the Paul's Bath uh, Collection. After he returned to Jerusalem, where he apparently left some, some manuscripts, he couldn't find them. And he accused the Ottomans of uh, taking them uh, perhaps during World War I. And, um, and so part of his collection went actually lost. And he then moved uh, permanently, permanently until, until his death uh, in, um, to Cairo where he became an active member. So as a scholar, really, leaving aside his activity as a, as a priest, um, became an active member of the Institut Francais d'Archéologie Orientale and the Institut d'Egypte. In 1927, uh, we know he sold 776 uh, manuscripts of his own library to the Vatican. But as we will see, the transactions took many years to, to get to, to this point, to the final say. And he died in Aleppo on 20 October, 1945, although he was moving between Aleppo and Cairo and, and living in, in these two places at the, at the same time till, till the very end. Um, he kept collecting manuscripts and the remaining uh, um, part of his library uh, made uh, of around 525 manuscripts, actually a few more, but some went lost. Um, and those manuscripts ended up in uh, to be donated by his bath hairs to the Fondation Georges and Mathilde de Salem uh, that is in Aleppo. They are now digitized and available on Hemol uh, platform uh, reading room. And um, and they're still actually uh, they, they survived the, the events in uh, in Syria, so they 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 are still uh, there. The library of uh, Bath though was never um, so the, his collection was never a fixed um, library as uh, uh, kept in one single place. It was always uh, um, a moving library. Uh, partly in Jerusalem, partly in Aleppo, partly in Cairo, and then uh, in, from 1927, part of it was uh, also in, in Rome at the Vatican. Although in one place, that is the catalog that uh, Paul Spath himself published um, from 1928 in, uh, in three volumes, we find all the manuscripts cataloged as a, as a single entity uh, named the Bibliothèque de Manuscript Post Bath. Uh, the other persons that um, was involved in the, in the acquisition of part of this collection um, and that we will look at today is uh, Eugene, the Cardinal Eugene Gabriel Gervais et Laurent Tisserin. He was a French prelate and Cardinal of the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, apparently, he was fluent on, in 13 languages. I don't know how that's possible, but that's what uh, his biography says, including Arabic and Syriac. And his studies were mostly theological um, studies. He started to work as a curator at the Vatican Library in 1908. His career was interrupted during his um, uh, the first world war. war one, uh, when he became an intelligence officer in the French um, army. Um, went back to the Vatican Library where he became assistant librarian in 1919. Uh, and his career culminated when he became uh, the prefect of the Vatican Library in uh, November, 1930. Was mostly dealing with, uh, in charge of the acquisition of manuscript collection. He was traveling 
um, in rare book, and he was traveling also around the world for, for this purpose. The archive documents held at the Vatican Library that I consulted. So first of all, um, the, the Vatican Library itself as an archive, there are the Vatican archives and then there is the Vatican Library that has its own archive of documents related to the different collections and acquisitions that were made um, by the library uh, throughout the, the years of its existence. And there are two folders that um, contain the materials related to what is called this bath collection at the, at the Vatican Library. For a total of 85 archive documents that uh, are made ma mostly of correspondence that relate to these transactions and are mostly written in French, but also some in Italian and some in, in Arabic. The cover period that goes, um, actually the dates of the letter, the first letter is 1913, although other letters refer to events that go uh, back to 1911, when the first encounter between Paul Spath and Eugene Tisserand took, took place. And they finished um, to, with the last letter that um, discusses uh, Spath final um, will, um, that is took place in uh, when he died in um, in October 1945. From this correspondence, we know that 776 manuscripts arrived at the Vatican Library in 1927, and that they were paid um, a total of 85,000 uh, Italian uh, liras, and um, the. The characteristic of this correspondence is it's very peculiar because um, the copies of the letters sent by, by Tisserand or by the, the, uh, the Vatican, um, in, in this case, the Vatican representatives are kept. So we have a, a sort of complete narratives of what has been received and what has been sent. Um, in, uh, in a very um, interesting way because um, I didn't have to search two places for the letters that were sent and received, but they are all gathered in, uh, in, this, um, in this folder. For a total of 18 letters written by Paul's Bath, 26 by Tisserand, but um, we need to keep in mind that during, uh, for a long period, um, there was an, an intermediary uh, writing letters uh, on behalf of Sbath that um, was the bibliophile and bookseller, um, Egyptian bookseller Joseph Elian Sarkis. Um, Tisseran didn't trust um, a direct communication with, uh, with Sbath because he, he didn't trust uh, Paul Sbath and we will see uh, why. And so he... Um, uh, and engaged and uh, and used an intermediary to um, to assist him with the with this transaction, and then there are other um, people involved and institutions that are mentioned in the correspondence, letters written to uh, Giovanni Mercati and Pope uh, uh, Pius XI, the eleventh, but also other people mentioned in the, in the correspondence. Um, that uh, we will uh, see briefly when we go through some of the contents. I also would like to mention um, in regarding to the correspondence that unfortunately I did ask um, and requested from the Vatican some uh, digital images of, of the um, letters, but I didn't receive a reply yet. So. Unfortunately, and it has been a long time, it, perhaps it, it takes a very long time uh, to get uh, to these images. Um, so unfortunately, I cannot show you the, the original um, copies of, of the letters, and uh, you will have to be happy with uh, my translation, because when I went to the, to the Vatican Library and consulted this archive material, I transcribed all the documents, and then uh, for the sake of the presentation, I, I translated them into, into English from the various languages that um, they are compiled. 
um, just before digging into the into the content of the correspondence, just to have a glimpse about on on the timeline to have the the few key dates. Um, Spath meets uh, Tisserand in 1911, and we know this from a letter that uh, Tisserand sends to the Pope, describing how interesting is Spath collection, but how uh, strange are uh, Spath demands for the sale of his collection, not just in monetary terms, but also in other terms that we shall see. And then there is, um, we have a few letters uh, from Sbath in 1913 that um, declare the, his wish to, uh, his will to say, sell his personal library only to the Vatican and, and to no one else. But uh, the, um, the real uh, conversation and, and uh, be between um, the, the, the real deal uh, between uh, Sbath and Tisserand starts to take place between 19, uh, uh, from 1923 when uh, Tisserand um, asks uh, Ilian Sarkis to work as, as an intermediary. And we will see why. Um, this is the time that Tisserand really wants to, um, at this point, he really wants to pursue the purchase of, uh, of Spath uh, Library. Um, as we can see, the, 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 the period goes from 1911 to 1927, when the transaction finally takes place. But the events regarding uh, Spath Library will keep going on until Spath death that it took place in, in 1945. So the first letter that uh, we have at the Vatican Archives is by Sbath to, to Tisserand, dated Aleppo 20 March 1913. And we can already see why uh, Sbath believes that his library is particularly um, relevant. He writes, for a long time, Europe has been exploiting our manuscripts, hence their rarity. For what remains in fact of manuscripts, the Orientals, enlightened on their current value, keep them jealously and refuse to sell them at any price. Assured wherever they are that the value of the manuscript will increase further in the future. The rarity of manuscripts with us Orientals and the obstinacy of people not to sell them justify Reverend Father the high cost with which I got to get them. And in the same letter he writes, uh, he writes, never as a Catholic priest, I would consent to enrich the treasures of the libraries of the Protestants or the atheist. And that is why, Reverend Father, when I decided to sell my manuscripts, I turned to the Vatican, of which I remained a submissive and devoted child. Basically, uh, from these letters already in 1913, we, we can see a double face um, that this Catholic priest um, has in uh, in this uh, sale uh, process. First, he is interested in 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 earning some money from this sale um, because it costed him not just money but a lot of work to gather these manuscripts. But he is also very keen to sell it to the Vatican, and we and we will see why. Um, the, the first letter, though, that, to, that we have uh, by Tisserand uh, related to Sbath, mentioning Sbath uh, collection, is dated 12 June 1923 and directed to uh, the librarian, uh, the previous li head librarian at the Vatican Library, um, Giovanni Mercati, where basically he describes how difficult it is to purchase manuscripts in, uh, in Cairo and find them, uh, interesting manuscripts. And at the end, he writes, the collection of the Catholic priest was bath that I like to obtain is found partly in Aleppo, partly in Jerusalem, and partly in Cairo, where the owner lives in a dangerous street. I asked a person I trust, that is Ilian Sarkis, to keep an eye on him. <clears throat> when I met the owner in 1911, he had observed the pretenses, by, but they say he's lacking funds. But we know by this letter that from 1913, when Sbath wrote the first letters to, to Tisserand to 1923, Sbath moved to Cairo, left his life as, as a priest, became fully a, a scholar, uh, 
interested in in the um, in the study and publication and publishing of articles related to his manuscripts and kept cataloging his manuscripts, but he was lacking funds and he was interested somehow to on two aspects of, of this, gaining some money from the sale of the manuscript, but also um, about something else. So Sarkis, the intermediary, uh, writes um, a letter to, to Tisserand on 4th July 1923, um, related to the fact that uh, when, when Tisserand writes to Mercati, it's, it's after a trip that he took to Cairo, where he really found very few manuscripts. So Sarkis writes to Tisran, after your departure, I had the pleasure of talking with Padre's Bath about the sale of his manuscripts. It took a lot of eloquence to convince him to give up his collection. According to him, he received many advantages offer, offers, but he refused to sell so far. The idea of entrusting the collections to the Vatican Palace, he calls it like that, struck him. Because he says, I'm not willing to sell my collection for money, but for honor and fame. His condition, he attached, are unacceptable. He claims he was offered 8,000 Egyptian pounds. However, given the special quality of this collection, I think the price could be between 1,500 to 1,000 Egyptian pounds. And this will be more or less the price that they will keep um, offering as a maximum price, actually fluctuating from uh, to, to, towards a lower price for, for various reasons. But from this letter already, we understand that um, Sbath wants to sell to the collection to the Vatican Library for honor and, and fame. And attached to these letters, there are what uh, uh, Sarkis calls uh, uh, um, absurd conditions that um, Spath is um, is requesting for for the sale of this library, his collection to the Vatican Library. Uh, he already, so the, this, these um, conditions are translated were translated by Sarkis uh, from Arabic to French. Um, so it is it is Bath writing this this part uh, that is included in in the letter that he sent to Tisserand in, in on the fourth of July. The collection of Father's Bath is the greatest Eastern Christian manuscript collection. It has more than a thousand manuscripts and it is growing. The owner's sole scope is to serve religion and science and to acquire honor from this collection. Orientalists and Americans made him many offers for the purchase of his collection, but he refused to sell it to them because he is not interested in the money. Here are the conditions for the sale of his manuscripts. The manuscript will be given to the Vatican Library as a donation. The money received by his bath will be considered as a compensation for the cost of his work and not for the value of the manuscripts. A special place should be reserved for the collection and should be assigned the title manuscript from the Library of Father Paul's bath. Uh, in this room also his portrait should be hung. Father Sbath is authorized to keep publishing his catalog and publications. The sum he asks as compensation is 2,000 Egyptian pounds. So what he's asking is really um, what could be seen uh, as um, the um, um, similar to what, what, what is an endowed, a work, an endowed library in, in the Middle East. So um, when uh, someone donates his collection to a special institution, then uh, that collection somehow is recognized under his name and can't be uh, sold to anyone else or can't be um, kept um, separate uh, in a way it needs to be ident identifiable and the owner uh, will be remembered and honored as the, the, the person that endows this collection. But the problem here is, is that Zbat is asking for money in compensation for for uh, for his uh, collection, so it can't be um, money in compensation for the books themselves. But um, he's now pretending that this money is is for covering the cost of his work as a collector and as a cataloger. Not only that, he asks also for the, in the manuscripts to be kept in a separate room uh, at the Vatican with his portrait and the name manuscript from the Library of, of Paul's Bath in, um, in, uh, at the Vatican Library. 
So, and here we start with the with the lost in translation part because Tisserand replies to Sarkis uh, immediately saying, as for the conditions set by Padre's bath for the transfer of his collection to the Vatican Library, here's how we can agree. We built in 1912 for the conservation of our manuscripts a warehouse entirely in cement and iron, which offers the maximum security. The manuscript should obviously be placed in this store. It is the safest place one could dream of. So already the conceptualization of, of the manuscript library is very different from the Vatican to a Middle Eastern library where the manuscripts are somehow accessible to, to the readers the, who read them, copy them, comment them, make notes and so on. Manuscripts are kept at the Vatican in a safe warehouse uh, with the cement and iron um, rooms and they need to be kept safely. Not only that, so there is no room that will be called the Father's Bath uh, Library and so on, um, but the manuscript could be called uh, Tisseran Offers um, in two ways, either um, mentioning Paul's Bath in their, basically in the, in the class mark as Codex Batianus uh, and, the, and the number of, um, of the of the manuscripts and so on, and then um, uh, he accepts also. Tisserand accepts also to keep a portrait of Father's Bath, but of course not in the warehouse where nobody can enter, but in the in the room where where the librarians work, um, including himself. Um, together with other portraits of, of other um, people that enriched um, the uh, Vatican Library with their collections. And of course, he also allows Padres Bath to keep uh, publishing his, uh, uh, his catalog and publication. And here, he perhaps he didn't understand very well what Bath is actually saying. But, and he asked Sbath to, to send him two copies for each publications that is related to the manuscripts of that collection. Sarkis keeps uh, um, uh, talking to Father Sbath about the sale, but clearly this is not happening um, because Tisseran is not accepting Sbath condition and Sbath keeps uh, reminding this, this condition to the point that Sarkis starts to really hate uh, Father's Bath. He says, Father's Bath is a real maniac. He had replied to me while I was in Beirut and I met him upon my return to Cairo. He still maintains his request for 2000 Egyptian pounds and won't give up. I don't think it's worth this price. Father's Bath claims that other people made him more advantageous offers, including an American library that was Princeton who offered um, 3,000 and another library in Rome who made him a good offer. I told him clearly that I did not believe him. And this round replies to Sarkis saying that he is glad that he um, mentioned that there are other people interested in, the, in this bath collection. And he's surprised though that uh, he says, I am also surprised that the American government is buying, given that American scholars have always left aside until today the studies of Syriac and Arabic Christian literature. It is likely that there is some Protestant propagand propagandists to inspire this approach. So he's, he is worried that, 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 that there is an increasing, increasing interest, uh, interest in, in the purchase of Spath collection. And, um, and Sarkis actually at a certain point replies to Cicero and saying, indeed, I could understand from another source that he was offered 3,500 Egyptian pounds by a library in Holland. And this already, and, and then he writes, the catalog of his manuscript is now published in Les Ecuadorien, and you can judge for yourself the value of these books. Sarkis says, I, I can't judge anymore uh, this, bath, this bath collection. I thought it wasn't worth up to 2,000 Egyptian pounds. Actually, he's getting offers that are very high, and he's also refusing them because he wants to sell to the Vatican. But I don't take any more responsibility for valuing these, these books. You can do that by looking at the catalog that is that Sbath is printing, uh, is publishing in the... In, in this uh, 
um, in Le Codorien and other uh, publications. And then there is an interruption of conversation between 7 June 1924 and 13 May 1925. So clearly the sale is not happening, but Sarkis insists to Tisserand. Father Bas is, is close to give up to his library to the Vatican. Why? Because Bath is uh, lacking puns and he really wants to, uh, to, to at least um, manage to sell this, uh, this part of the library. He talks to me about, about it every day and he seems to be willing to accept 2,000 Egyptian pounds for it. Are you still willing to buy his collection? But then he uh, keeps writing to Tisserand the conditions that Bath requires that his father's boss would like to keep the title of owner of the collection and would like to keep publishing its catalog under his own name. The amount of uh, 1, um, 160,000 Italian liras, that is the equivalent of uh, um, 2,000 Egyptian pounds, given to Sbatha, not for the manuscript, but in compensation for Sbatha work. And this is why the deal should not be divulgated. So these are still the same requests that Sbatha keeps making to Tisserand. And Tisserand replies to Sarkis, okay, Father Sbatha will continue to publish his catalog and its edition that is understood, but how, I don't see how he intends to remain the owner of his collection. Does he claim that his heirs, for example, can claim it after his death? It would be a strange claim. And then we will not disclose the price at which we will have bought his collection. It is not our custom, but we cannot vouch for a secret of which we are not the sole custodians. So here again, this is another part where the meaning of owner gets lost in translation because in, in an endowment deed, even if um, Bath would appear as, as the owner of that collection, the manuscript would be endowed entirely to the library and that uh, makes it impossible for the heirs to claim uh, a right on, on their on the ownerships. Um, but clearly Tisserand doesn't get this um, this concept. And, and then he doesn't get even the, the continue to publish his catalogs. He, does, he, does, he didn't understand that uh, Paul's Bath was working on the Bibliothèque de Manuscript Paul's Bath calling Bibliotheque Manuscript was both the manuscripts that he was going to sell to the Vatican Library as well. Um, at this point, Serans or plans is a uh, trip to, um, to the Middle East to complete the purchase of Sbath uh, uh, collection in person. And um, he makes all uh, the plans uh, in in details, and all these details are described in a letter that he then writes to the Pope. And we're in March 1926, so he traveled first from Rome to Athens, then from Athens to Cyprus, then from Cyprus gets to Beirut, and from Beirut he was supposed to go to meet um, uh, Sbath in Beirut with all the manuscripts, but then um, Sbath doesn't uh, show up and uh, in fact, uh, several uh, things go, go on during this, uh, during this, this trip uh, made by Tisserand to the point that Tisserand goes back to Rome without the manuscript after he spends several weeks uh, chasing um, his bath from um, Beirut to was even going to Aleppo, then goes back to Beirut and Cairo and so on. And here we have a few lines from Sarkis Tisserand saying what, what's happening, what's going on. Father Sbath is in Cairo. I told him last Tuesday to send his manuscripts to Beirut from Aleppo so that you can receive them at the beginning of April. He found that thousands of pretexts not to leave. He's such a weak man. He evoked the Syrian revolts, the plague, the bandits, and I don't know what else. Although I threatened to take him in front of the apostolic delegate, he ended up telling me that he will wait for your arrival in order to decide about the dispatch of the manuscripts. So, uh, Father Sbath then uh, goes to Aleppo, but then from Aleppo he stays there because he pretends to be ill. He doesn't send uh, sell the manuscripts. 
Tisserand goes back to, uh, to Italy, to Rome, and he has to justify to the Pope why he went and spent all the money for this trip and came back with no manuscript whatsoever. To the point that he writes to the Pope, it occurred to me that Father Sbas does not actually have all of the manuscripts in his catalog. He denies his suspicious and solemnly affirmed that the manuscript were really in his possession. Sorry. And that they would one day be handed over to the Vatican, but he could not say when. And then he even considered the possibility of opening um, a legal case against Bath, but then because he is a Catholic priest, um, it would be a scandal. So he gave up on this, uh, gave up on this possibility, but he makes um, an arrangement, a legal arrangement with signed documents to confirm that eventually Sbath will sell his collections to him. And so we, from May 1926, um, that this uh, letter was sent probably to the Pope in, uh, around that period, um, we end up in September 1926. And from now on, the um, Sarkis disappears from, from the conversation. Uh, it is Bath. Uh, sending um, letters directly to Tisserand and and vice versa, and um, but uh, Sbath keeps asking the same request that he made to Tisserand from the very beginning, from the first letter that he wrote in 1913. So he writes, according to what I promised you in Beirut, I come to tell you that I'm ready to send my manuscript to the Vatican another day that suits you. So my collection already amounts to a thousand volumes containing more than 1,500 titles and deserves to have the status of a special collection. I would like it to be kept in the Vatican in a special room that is separate from the rest of the library. And this room is called Father's Bath Library. Then he mentioned his friend, Ahmed Pashazaki, that did the same with his library, endowed it to the Egyptian government, but on the condition that it's not attached to the Egyptian library, this is known as the al Rizana Zakia, and so on. And then, of course, he repeats that the amount that will be given to me as compensation, I leave it to you to estimate it. So pretending that he's not interested in the money anymore, he's really interested that his library uh, has his own special status at the Vatican. And this rant, this rant replies again, frustrated by the same request, saying we have already dealt with all questions related to this transfer. I already explained to you why giving each of your manuscript the name of Codex Batianus is much better than having them in a special room. In no library in Europe are manuscripts readily available to readers. And with us, they are either locked in three rooms in cement and iron, which look like gigantic strong cages, giving the maximum security. The case of Ahmad Zaki Pasha Library is quite different since this collection contains both manuscripts and printed books. And this is quite interesting information. And then what happened is that uh, we, we get to the very end of the, of the transaction when Sbath needs to send this, uh, the, the manuscripts to Rome. And here even more problems arise. Uh, so, Bath goes to Aleppo from, from Cairo, where he plans to stay for two months in order to arrange for the, um, uh, for the dispatch of these, uh, these books. But then he starts to be a bit paranoid about a few things. First of all, he says that absolutely, that maintaining absolute secrecy regarding the delivery of said book. If anything restrains me in this direction, it results, from, it results from my fear that you cannot keep this secret because if anyone would come to know about it, I would be the subject of serious prejudice for months. So um, being seen in the, in the Middle East, uh, and Sbath was part of the academia, even if he wasn't a, a, a very renowned scholar, he was part of the, the, uh, the academic activity in Cairo. Um, being seen as, as someone that is dealing with manuscript was a very bad, um, was very bad for his reputation, and that wasn't what he wanted to be, a manuscript dealer. He wanted to be the uh, one endowing, donating his library to the Vatican, but he needed to get some kind of compensation for it, and and this was 
uh, very crucial point. Um, and then he, he tells Cicero, and consequently, you are not permitted to have anyone see the manuscript in advance, in advance until I say so. And for the moment, I cannot say till when you are bound to secrecy. And then he says that also shipping the manuscript is very uh, difficult. And he wants Tisran to go back again to, 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 to make the journey back to the Middle East to take them, even if Sbath have to compensate him for the, for the trouble. And um, he keeps writing to Tisran, but we will know later that he, Tisran was um in in a trip to the us at this time and so he wasn't replying to to Zbach that becomes even more anxious and says that uh, he can't even that, that there is no tran transport agents in aleppo that will take uh, will guarantee the shipment of of the book at their own risk and peril and that the only way for was for tisran to come and and pick the books himself uh, but also he specified, come, come down directly to Aleppo without staying in Beirut or come via Tripoli, where you are not known, or even via Alexandretta, and with three hours by car you will reach Aleppo. He, he wants Tisserans to do this in secrecy so that nobody would know why he's there and what's, what he's about to, to do. Tisserans goes back to, from his trip to America to, uh, to the Vatican Library and tells him that absolutely he can't travel to, to the Middle East again, as he told uh, Spath already, um, because he lost one month when he went last time for, for nothing. And uh, of course, that uh, Spath should uh, um, make some arrangement with an um, insurance company to ensure the, the books. He can't just ask the, the travel agents to do, to do so. And that he did so in many occasions. Although at this time, I think it, things uh, changed um, and it was much more difficult to dispatch things from Syria outside Syria at the time. And so it is possible that also here we have uh, lost in, a message lost in translation because this run doesn't really get how difficult it is at this particular time to uh, dispatch manuscripts outside uh, Syria. Nevertheless, Ma uh, Zbath managed to sell uh, these manuscripts eventually, and they get to Rome in, um, in uh, September uh, 1926. And by November, um, Tisseran um, replies to Zbath uh, after, of course, he already mentioned that he received it. The, the manuscripts, but he hasn't paid him yet because he had to check the content. And what happens is that, first of all, he said, I check your manuscripts a little slowly. I want you to do everything by myself in order to better keep your secret in an isolated room and in small sessions for fear that a prolonged absence from my office where I must be continuously at the disposal of all arouses the attention of my colleagues. And then, uh, he goes on in this letter uh, with the details of the manuscripts he consulted, and he says, I here indicated only the manuscript for which I am most certain of the dates. There are several others that should be estimated by a century later. You understand that only this matter modifies the value of the collection, because the oldest manuscripts are the most expensive, not those dated 18 and 19 centuries. All things considered, I propose to the Holy Father, Holy Father to pay you for this first shipment a sum of 85,000 liras. So instead of the, um, 160,000, so almost half of them. Also because he received um, last month, he was promised by Spat 988 manuscripts, he received about 720. So um, not only the number, but here he starts to evaluate the, the manuscript by the date, saying those that are oldest are the, the, the most expensive and your collection is mostly made of 18th and 19th century manuscripts and it's not, um, and it's not worth uh, much to the point that I'm giving even more uh, than uh, the what, uh, what is worth. 
And then, uh, so basically, Isbach uh, accepts the, the payment, and then we get uh, in the in the archive documents with the very end to the a letter that uh, is sent to the Serran by um, Anawati that uh, says, uh, "Eminence, perhaps I will be the first person to announce to your Eminence the death of uh, Reverend Paul Isbach. He died on Saturday, October 10th." Uh, to Thiefoid, he called me when he felt seriously ill and told me that two thirds of his library of manuscripts had been secretly sent to the Vatican and that I had to send the rest. Yesterday, I saw Mr. Non Tamas, cousin of Padre's bath, entrusted by the two brothers of the latter who are in Aleppo to liquidate the succession. Mr. Tamas is very well disposed and would like Padre's bath last wish to be carried out. He assured me that he could absolutely count on Father Genahami, depository of the manuscript, but a little less on his both brothers. One is a rich merchant and the other has no fortune. So Tisseran actually replies to this letter, is very keen to get the remaining part of uh, Sbath library, but as we know, uh, Sbath heirs and, and Sbath brothers intervened and the manuscript never uh, went to, um, to the Vatican. And uh, they ended up in the Matilde and Salem, um, Matilde Salem, Georgia Matilde Salem collection in, in Aleppo. Um, so, what got lost in translation? And so, why did this library get lost in translation? Uh, in conclusion, so first of all, we saw two different conceptualization of a manuscript library, from one that is being already accessible to the audience. Um, to the readers uh, with manuscripts in, in open shelves that can be consulted and so on, uh, an endowed library that somehow gives honor to the, to the owner that endowed it, to a manuscript library that is not anymore, it's a, a recognizable collection just by his class mark, but is kept in separate rooms. So it can't be really seen as a whole, as, as an um, entity, a single entity. Not only this, in, in, in this case in particular, the collection gets lost also physically um, because part of it remains in, in the Middle East with, with Sbath and is never, never ends up to, to, to complete the collection uh, at the Vatican. And then, of course, there is also the different approach to the value of manuscripts um, in terms of monetary value. For Sbath, manuscripts are, are important for their content. And in, in this particular case, the, the library he put together is a library made of mostly Arabic, but also some Syriac uh, text. And uh, the, they represent the Eastern Christian heritage, most of all collected from um, families in Aleppo. Uh, they were mostly made of Christian uh, families, but not only. And um, in his um, life, he basically tried to, to work for the sake of religion and science in a way. So he collected several books about all the possible texts uh, related to the Eastern Christian heritage, but also scientific text, of, uh, text from the Arabic um, an Islamic um, heritage related to, to scientific knowledge. So his collection had a meaning also in terms of a scholarly meaning also as a whole. And, and this meaning gets lost when, when it ends up at the Vatican where, where, where Sbath thought would be instead the, the perfect place to um, to increase his personal uh, prestige and honor, but also to uh, to highlight the the importance and relevance of uh, of his own library. And then, of course, there is a different approach to selling manuscript for for Tisserand. This was always a really a transaction. I'm uh, purchasing manuscripts from a manuscript dealer. Uh, for for Spath, it wasn't absolutely the case. And uh, yes, I, I mentioned the different approach to the academic use of, of manuscripts. So these are a few notes and uh, on the on this presentation, and I would very much um, enjoy discussing with you uh, the contents of uh, of the correspondence that I shared with you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.